Coming up on this week's news, eFix can reveal the UK's electricity network chiefs are proposing a controversial change to the nation's voltage. Another fake spark who did dangerously faulty work is unmasked, and IKEA's first week selling photovoltaic kit has been marred by a huge solar panel fire on the roof of its flagship store. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly, whether you're listening in the van, on site or down at the wholesale counter. I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. This week, the recording studio is being powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World, with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over £150. We're being lit by Flex 7 with our lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. And if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show comment with them below for the chance to win a prize and while you're there click the links to check out what our sponsors offer and if any of our video format viewers are wondering what's happened to my face this week all i'll say is you should see the other guy the UK's electricity network chiefs are proposing a controversial change to the nation's voltage limits. It's a move they say will make it easier to manage the grid as more renewable energy sources are added. Under the proposal, the lower legal limit of mains voltage would be reduced to 207 volts, bringing the UK in line with European standards. The issue arises because solar inverters can push up local voltages when exporting power to the grid. DNOs currently operate the network with voltage at the top end of its legal limits, where there's little headroom to cope with the rise. This voltage inflation can cause electrical equipment such as EV chargers to shut down in self-protection mode once they detect voltages approaching the upper limit of 253 volts. To prevent these problems, operators have been forced to limit the amount of renewable energy that can be connected, frustrating homeowners with solar and battery systems. It's believed that many households are unable to secure the full export allowance they want. At present, UK mains voltage is nominally 230 volts with a tolerance of plus 10% and minus 6%. This standard was adopted in 1995 to harmonise with Europe, though in practice most households still experience close to the old 240 volts. The new proposal would extend the lower tolerance to minus 10%, allowing voltages as low as 207 volts. Network operators say this would enable them to reduce average grid voltages by around 2% or 5 volts, freeing up capacity for more renewable generation. It's expected that they will reduce the voltage initially by 1% and then, following an assessment, will cut by a further percentage point. However, lowering the limit could have side effects. The change also requires an amendment to the law, officially the Electricity Safety, Quality and Continuity Regulations, but not everyone is on board. The Institution of Engineering and Technology, authors of the UK Wiring Regulations, has warned that the move could affect older or safety-critical systems such as fire pumps. It also cautions that standby generators and uninterruptible power supplies might interpret the lower voltages as outages, triggering unnecessary switchovers. According to the IET, changes in voltage thresholds could also impact the trip behaviour of MCBs. This could require updates to the wiring regulations to maintain safety and compliance. Network operators counter that these concerns are overstated. They say that most 240 volt rated domestic equipment is now obsolete and that modern appliances are designed to function safely across the full European voltage range. For most consumers, the change would be imperceptible in both performance and safety. Even so, the Energy Networks Association, the network operator's representative body, admits that some households already receive low voltages near the present limits. These customers will now receive a voltage within the revised tolerance range. The association will be launching a consultation later this year to seek feedback from electricians and other stakeholders. In the spirit of avoiding compartmentalisation, eFix will of course keep you posted on this developing story and we'll share details on the consultation when we get them. In other news, another fake spark has been unmasked, this time in Ireland. Simon Murphy from New Ross carried out dangerously faulty work on two properties while fraudulently claiming to be a registered electrical contractor. In Ireland, electrical contracting is a restricted occupation. You need to be registered with the country's safe electric scheme to practice as an installer. Wexford District Court heard that Murphy used incorrect cable sizes which could have led to overheating and even a fire. Further breaches of the Irish wiring regulations included double pole isolation not being installed in a distribution board, no RCD protection on some circuits, and a new electric shower which was connected to an existing shower supply creating a potential overload. Murphy's lawyer Eileen O'Neill told the hearing that he is a trained electrician but now works in a bar and restaurant owned by his family. 
She said Murphy was willing to cover the costs of a registered electrician for both homeowners. Judge White said this is the bare minimum and described the works as dangerously faulty. He ordered Murphy to pay £1,900 compensation and a further £350 to the Commission for Regulation of Utilities, which brought the case. It's not the only case where electrical safety made headlines. In London, IKEA's first week selling photovoltaic equipment has been marred by a spectacular solar panel conflagration on the roof of one of its biggest stores. Five fire engines and around 30 firefighters tackled the blaze at the flagship Wembley outlet. Around 100 panels were alight at one stage, sending a huge plume of smoke into the sky in West London. Some 250 people were safely evacuated from the store. The blaze happened as the Swedish flat pack giant began selling solar panels, battery packs and heat pumps in the UK. The stores previously sold photovoltaic systems but pulled the products in 2019 when the UK government ended the feed-in tariff scheme. Now the panels are back following a hugely successful debut in Germany. IKEA says that to ensure that installations comply with all the regulations, the renewable kit will be installed by certified installers. The retailer has teamed up with Solly and Aera to deliver the service. Still on solar, the micro-generation certification scheme has announced yet another extension to the deadline for electricians to comply with its new standard for solar installs. The organisation says it's extending its implementation until the 10th of August next year. This is to allow time for manufacturers to get kits certified. Previously, the deadline was the 10th of November. The specification covers the kit for mounting the panels on flat roofs. When it eventually comes into force, the effect will be that you must use certified equipment only. During this time, installers can use products that already hold certification to the latest version of MCS 012. They can also continue to use affected solar mounting products that previously held certification and are in the grace period. All such products are marked in the MCS installation database and MCS product directory with the label grace period after the certification number. I'll put a link to the full announcement in the show notes. Now, off the back of that huge announcement from the ENA, Solis has unveiled a host of new solar kit for commercial and industrial applications. One of the brand's big advantages is the ability of its hybrid inverters to handle a solar input of up to 200% of the inverter's rated DC power. So, yes, you can connect twice as much solar as the inverter's rating. If you use a number of 2,000 operating hours a year, a Solis system can generate an extra 188 megawatt hours annually compared with typical designs. The company has also just unveiled its latest innovation, which it's describing as lesser hybrid inverters and more a four-in-one powerhouse. Instead of juggling multiple devices, cables and control systems, the unit puts everything you need into one intelligent platform. The battery has smart charging and discharging, it stores energy when it's cheap and uses it when it matters most. There's a PV inverter for harnessing the sun's energy. There's also an on-off grid and genset switching which means that you can move seamlessly between power sources. And finally a smart energy management system which optimizes usage based on your needs, tariffs and load priorities. Coming next month is a 120 25 kilowatt version which boasts integration with an AI powered cloud. It works with the recently upgraded Solis Cloud platform which learns site specific consumption patterns, factors in weather forecasts and tariffs and automatically schedules battery charging and discharging. And if you've never installed their new 50 kilowatt hybrid inverter before you could bag yourself a massive discount of 30% off your first order of one. Simply register your interest by filling in the form at the link in the show notes and they'll be in touch with some details and the discount code. German firm Hansel has unveiled junction boxes for SWA cables with a built-in protective earth inlay. You insert and connect the cables using the company's GSC glands, which provides protection of up to IP68. Using an included PE bridge, even non-armoured cables can be easily connected to armoured cables in one cable junction box. Additionally, the thermoplastic cable junction boxes offer many advantages over traditional metal ones. Firstly, there's the ease of installation. The material is lighter but has a comparable strength to metal. Then there's cost savings and longer durability. Best of all, they stay rust-free in harsh environments. Hensel are going to be exhibiting their products at the Elect Show in Sandown, Surrey on the 6th and 7th of November, so make sure that you book your free ticket and pop along and see them there. Lighting manufacturer Robus is going green. The progressive brand has announced that it's on target to cut its carbon footprint by 30% by 2030. It says the way to manage your true environmental impact is to measure it. That's why it looks at the entire energy used by its luminaires over their lifetime, as well as the emissions it takes to make them. It also includes the emissions caused by the plastics, metals and other materials in its products. It even calculates the energy used to process and dispose of its products at the end of their life. The company worked with climate experts Greenlee to come up with 13 ways it can have a higher impact on reducing its emissions. It already does some good stuff. Its headquarters in Dublin is run on 100% green energy from solar panels, feeding excess back to the grid. And yes, 
That does include the Guinness dispenser in the showroom. A reminder that there's still time to avail yourself of a special offer this month from Velocity, maker of top tier tool bags and backpacks for the trade. If you buy one of four qualifying products from the brand during October, then the company will add a free £40 drill pod excess for free. Qualifying kit includes the firm's top of the range Rogue 600 wheeler tool case. This one has a superpower. It's the world's first trackable tool bag. The Rogue 600 is equipped with a Velocity Connect tracker right out of the box so you can know where your kit is at all times. It combines massive storage capacity while being super mobile as it's equipped with two sturdy all-terrain wheels and a telescopic handle. It has two front tool sections for vertical tool storage and a larger open section on the rear for your larger tools. In total it has no fewer than 55 pockets for all your gear. Other kit that qualifies for the deal are the Rogue 50 and the Stealth NB100 backpacks and the Rogue 20 XL service bag. To avail yourself of the deal simply buy the kit and pop the drill pod excess into the basket as well then use the promo code EFIX to make the drill pod excess complimentary. You can use the code up to Friday the 31st of October. Now it's that great moment where we get to celebrate the sterling work being done by the next generation. Our Learner of the Week slot is brought to you by El Taco, German manufacturer of premium actuators, sensors and energy meters for smart homes. And our Learner this week is Sheldon Fieldhouse. Sheldon's journey from student at Bradford College to fully qualified electrician with CBRE is nothing short of inspiring. From the very beginning, he showed outstanding commitment to his training and consistently excelled throughout his apprenticeship. What sets Sheldon apart is not just his technical ability, but his leadership. He's been a role model in Bradford College, regularly sharing his professional journey on LinkedIn, mentoring level two students and helping to create a culture of growth, professionalism and mutual support. No wonder he has a string of accolades to his name. He won the CBRE Exceptional Award for going above and beyond. He was highly commended in the West Yorkshire Apprenticeship Awards and he was Electrical Apprentice of the Year at the Bradford College Apprenticeship Star. Our awards. Sheldon's dedication and commitment to community engagement make him a shining example of what the next generation of electricians can achieve. Well done Sheldon on being the eFix Learner of the Week in association with El Taco. We look forward to hearing more great things from your inspirational journey. Now, if you're looking to break into the industry, we can help. eFix has set up a dedicated LinkedIn group for people training in electrical installation. It's aimed at apprentices, full-time learners, and adults training in the evening. Just log on to LinkedIn and search for UK electrician apprenticeships and career support. I'll also put a link in the show notes. And now to the lighter side of the electrical news. Yes, it's time for tea break with Quickwire and its range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. The electrical industry charity recently shared the story of an apprentice electrician named Jack. At just 21, Jack was balancing full-time training in the electrical trade and caring for his mother Fiona, who was undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Because his mother had to retire early, the family was under serious financial strain. The EIC stepped in via their apprenticeship support program to provide a bursary and practical assistance, enabling Jack to continue his apprenticeship without having to drop out or sacrifice caring for his mother. The Electrical Industries Charity do incredible work for electricians and those connected to the industry. If you'd like some more information about how you could get help from them, then check out the link in the show notes. That's the lighter side of the news in our tea break with Quickwire and their range of incredibly rapid electrical connectors. Click the link in the description to check them out for yourself. And now over to the John Motson of the electrical industry, it's Joe 2.0 with the latest roundup from our Fantasy Football League. Game week nine is over and out, and what a frustrating one it was for many managers. A lot of the big names blanked, leaving plenty of us staring at single-digit returns and wondering why we even bother. But while most of us were suffering, a few smart managers spotted the gaps, made some bold calls, and shot up the table. Let's break down who made the most of it. We start with the Marshall Tuflex team of the week, which goes to, time will tell, Paul Austin. Paul racked up 85 points and Captain Van der Ven. Absolute genius or pure luck. Either way, it paid off big time. Well played, Paul. If I were you, I'd be buying a lottery ticket this week. Next up, the fuse box fly of the week goes to How the Low Can You Go? Kevin Foley. Kevin surged 77 places up the table thanks to massive hauls from Embuemo and once again, Van der Ven. That Spurs defender is single handedly powering half his league right now. Fantastic work, Kevin. Some very sharp picks there. Now for the EV Blocks Defense of the Week. And this one goes to a familiar face PK Blinders, Felix Batchelor. Felix pulled off a bold move with a triple Arsenal defence and when you throw Van der Ven into the mix, that back line racked up a ridiculous 44 points. Well played, clearly there's a reason you're sitting first in the table. Last but not least, the TIS transfer of the week, my pick and Buemo. He's in great form for United, helping push them up to 6th and it looks like he's just getting started. I've already transferred him in myself, so fully expect him to blank immediately. You're welcome everyone. Before we go, 
Let's take a look at how Team Efix are doing in the league. Leading the charge is Joe Robinson in 136, clearly benefiting from that holiday look. Right behind him are me and Rick, sitting neck and neck in 144th and 146, basically a mid-table rivalry in full swing. Holding steady mid-pack is Gordon in 207th, while Joe Hammond sits in 297th, doing his best impression of a team rebuilding for next season. Then we've got Gary in 352nd, and finally, Steve, who's holding the table up nicely in 383rd. Someone's got to do it. We appreciate your service, Steve. That's the highlights from Game Week 9 in the EFIX Fantasy League. Huge thanks to our brand partners for backing the fun every week, and don't forget to enter the draw for the Nipex Tool of the Week. Link's in the description. Until next time, may your captains actually play. May your benches be stacked, and may Leeds continue to disappoint Rick. Thanks very much for that update, Joe. Now, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, empowering their customers to harness power through light with their intelligent energy solutions, solar technology and advanced lighting systems, it's Leadbands. With their new award-winning Lumo consumer unit and offering complete product support from their highly trained team, it's CPN QDIS. And with over 5,000 product lines from heating, lighting, ventilation to wiring accessories, if you need it, they've got it. It's Electrical Distributor CED Group. And the best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality products, it's Doncaster Cables. Click the links in the show notes to find out more about these great brands. If you think you know the words I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guesses into the comments. We'll take all the correct guesses and select one at random to be the winner of an eFix goodie bag prize. Answers submitted after about lunchtime on the Thursday after release will not be entered into the draw. Now let's reveal the winners of last week's challenge word competition. Last week's words were purview and schnauzer. And while many people got schnauzer with various methods of spelling, as far as I can see, nobody got purview. And so, collectively, we've saved our Jenna trip to the post office this week. Well done us. This week, the recording studio has been powered by our friends over at Consumer Unit World with high stock levels of your favourite consumer units, including BG and free next working day delivery on orders over £150. And we've been lit by Flex7 with their lightning fast pre-wired modular lighting connection system that keeps your installation times razor sharp. Don't forget to click the links in the show notes to find out more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening. And until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there. And remember, there's no such thing as a torque calibrated arm.